Hi, Gavin Bottrell here. Um, just doing a short video. This is 1.2 kilos of raw, natural gutta percha. So what I'm going to do is cut off about 45, 50 grams, hopefully off the end. Um, I'm going to boil it up and I'm going to make a golf ball. Right, so I've got 44 grams worth of gutta here and I've just set my kettle on to boil to boil up some hot water. I'm going to use this old pan, saucepan. So the water's now boiled. I'll stick that in there. And uh, hopefully it will uh, become mouldable. Right, it has gone soft, but I'm just, as you can see, uh, putting some extra heat to bring it back up to the boil and then try and wadge it all together. It's nearly there, it's getting a bit softer. Just put it in there. So it's now mouldable in the hands and I cut this in, in uh, three initial chunks and um, hopefully they're going to stick together. But I think it's going to need probably a few heatings and then uh, moulding together and then actually pulling it like toffee. Okay so it's um, getting more malleable and stretchy and um, I think it's just a bit of a repeated process now to try and get this all to stick together in a nice ball. Um, probably a little bit easier said than done. So it's back in the pan. I've actually got another little bit of uh, water going to boil in the kettle um, in case I run a bit dry. But um, I've now put this back in two or three times and uh, one thing also it gives off a very distinct smell. It's not unpleasant, um, it's a, sort of a bit of a sweet smell, um, which is actually quite distinctive. Okay, so this is starting to go into a ball now, and um, you can hear that. It's even, it's quite sticky to the hand and would stick to this uh, kitchen worktop, um, very lightly sticking. Um, but what I'm trying to do now is to, one, get it into a ball, but to, two, try and, at the minute, it's got some sort of what you'd call cold shuts in terms of moulding, where pieces of the material have sort of come together, but they've not fully joined. And by all accounts, uh, when ball makers were making gutter balls, one, they had to make sure that there wasn't any sort of Air, massive air holes, voids inside, or that would be a weakness and the balls could come apart. But two, I think actually there was probably quite a bit of um, skill needed in terms of getting it so that there wasn't any surface cold shuts. But um, it's coming together. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is just sort of roll it, heat it, roll it, heat it, roll it, heat it, and see how we go. Well, as you can see, it's starting to get better in terms of sphericality and surface uh, occlusions or cold shuts, call them what you will. I've actually found um, it's probably more effective trying to roll them between your hands than actually like this on the tabletop. Um, this is good for getting sort of um, a nice smooth surface, but in terms of getting a good shape, I've personally found between the hands is probably more effective. Okay, so I've, I've rolled this quite a lot. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually let it cool uh, quite a bit. In fact, I could put it in some water. That would help. Cold water, of course. Um, so that the core sort of firms up and then I'm going to work on it some more. So this has been sitting in some cold water for about two or three minutes and it's hardened up quite a lot on the surface of course but I can still feel that the inside 
it's still a bit soft. Um, so I'm going to leave it quite uh, a few more minutes in the cold water. It's starting to get a bit harder now. You can hear the sound. That still feels a sounds a little bit soft. Cooling down some more, but not fully yet. Okay, so this ball's been uh, cooling off for about an hour now. I've been sort of periodically testing it by just running my nail over the surface. Whilst the surface is still a little bit soft, you can hear that it's hardened up quite a lot. Well, I decided um, to make this ball into a moulded gutter. I've got this old original uh, brass mould. Um, and that's how it's just come out of the mould. Um, it's pretty good. For it's um, almost a first attempt. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll trim off the uh, fin and um, let's see how that goes. Okay, so here we are a few minutes later. That's the fin. What I tend to do is cut it off in two uh, passes if you like. Uh, once, get the majority of the material off with a pair of scissors and then for the second pass I use a little craft knife, a very sharp one. So there we are. Um, not absolutely perfect on the fin, but literally that's only taken me less than a minute. So, it's hardening up. That's, this is an old gutter. I mean, what they did with these um, is they put, they laid them up for probably six months, I think it was, for the surfaces to harden and oxidise. So um, there would be a change in tone after uh, those six months. But um, I'm not quite finished with this ball. So that's how you would make a a moulded gutter, but what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to put it back into the boiling water for a little um, extra thing for the video. Okay, so we'll just um, pop that in there. What I want them to do is just Oops. Now, something quite uh, unusual, which I've never witnessed before. When I've put this ball back into the hot water, almost boiling, the outer sort of peeled away, well not peeled away, but has shrunk and almost formed uh, a sort of depression around the equator of the ball. Something I've never noticed before. Now, that um, is uh, not uh, great for what I was just about planning to do, which I'll hopefully show you in a minute. But um, I'm wondering if that has some kind of uh, historical relevance in how they first made gutter percher balls. Anyway, Perhaps if you've got thoughts, you might put them in the comments of this video. Um, anyway, I'm going to try and get this again nice and quite smooth. So I've reworked this ball so it's in relatively good spherical shape and a reasonable but not perfect surface. And now I'm going to hammer it. So I can't really uh, film and hammer it at the same time, but um, trust me, uh, there's my hammer. 
uh, turn it around that way and um, I'll uh, take some more footage in a second. Okay, so I've just done the first row and what you do is you go all the way around the ball, turn it through 90 degrees and do it the same. So this ball, I'm doing what's called the Forgan pattern. So this is, if you like, the North Pole, where I've done the, the hammer strikes going in opposite directions to form a grid. And round about, I've got like a ring, you can see, of horizontal lines. Now I'm going to do those vertically all the way around to effectively uh, make the mesh. So that's now done in both directions. And um, I've done the other side, but... Um, so there's quite a bit of discoloration on this ball. I'm not sure whether the gutter, I didn't mix it enough. Um, and it's not perfectly smooth in many places. But um, I'd have confidence that that would work as a golf ball. I'm now just going to go over and fill in a few missed strikes. By my calculation, um, you should have about 225 strikes. You see, I've missed a bit there where I need to go vertically. Okay, so I've done all the hammering. There's the sort of North Pole, if you like. There's the South Pole. That's the equator. And basically, there we are. That's a hand-hammered gutter, as they would have used in the 1850s to right up until the 1880s, I think. Um, see how it sounds. It sounds it's getting there. Um, now, this, I also make featheries. Now this is a feathery, the Mark 25. Um, and you can understand uh, why they went to gutter, because this took me about 10 hours. This, on the whole, took me an actual working time, probably half an hour, but with some practice, it could be less than 10 minutes. Thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please put them uh, below. Bye.